why can't there be multiple gods that we can believe in? And why can't there be multiple ways Good. into heaven? Good. There can be. But you see, what you've got to answer, ma'am, is why would you believe in heaven? Have you ever been there? Neither have I. So in light of the fact you've never seen heaven, why would you as a thinking human being believe there's a heaven? This conversation addresses some fundamental and challenging questions about faith, belief, and the existence of good and evil. Here's a breakdown of the main points discussed. It's proposed that there can be multiple gods and ways to heaven, but the conversation emphasizes the importance of trustworthiness in religious claims. Different religions offer contradictory teachings, making it intellectually dishonest to claim they all lead to the same place. Investigating the life and claims of Jesus Christ is essential to determine if he is trustworthy. I mean, Why? Th through the Christian faith, is, is there not the, the communication that if you are, you do live by the faith, you get, and you are forgiven, you go to heaven? Yes, but ma'am, my being convinced that I'm going to heaven is based on one thing, the trustworthiness of Jesus Christ. Because I've never been to heaven. So I don't know if there's a heaven or not from my experience. And I can promise you, Austin is not heaven. Okay? It's a very nice place, but it's not heaven. Right. Okay? So you see, ma'am, when it comes to heaven, you're going to have to trust somebody the same way I'm going to have to trust somebody. And the question is, why do you trust whoever it is you trust? So because Muhammad contradicts Jesus, and because Jesus contradicts the avatars of Hinduism, and because the avatars of Hinduism contradict Siddhartha Gautama Buddha, and because they all contradict Baha'i faith, you've got to be on the intellectual level of a cockroach if you say they're all saying the same thing. They're not, ma'am. They're contradicting each other. So either they're all wrong or one of them's right. And now you've got to study the Gospels for yourself, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you've got to ask yourself, does the evidence point to Jesus being the truth? And if it does, trust him. But if the evidence is that Christ is a liar, you'd be a fool to trust him. Do not trust Jesus if the evidence is he's a fraud, he's a hypocrite, he's a liar. Don't trust him. But if the evidence is he's totally reliable, if the evidence is he really did die and rise from the dead, then you can trust him, and he's the one who promises heaven to everybody who puts their faith in him. Belief in heaven is based on trust in Jesus Christ, as personal experience of heaven is unavailable. Trust in Jesus is rooted in the evidence of his life, death, and resurrection as recorded in the Gospels. The existence of evil and suffering is a profound challenge, particularly for the belief in an all-powerful, all-knowing, and benevolent God. The argument is that God limited his power by giving humans free will, and the misuse of this free will, and the misuse of this free will, and suffering. Natural suffering and animal suffering are explained as consequences of a world affected by human rebellion against God. Um, how do you explain the existence of evil and suffering? You bet. Very slowly, having to acknowledge I can't give you a complete answer, I do not know ultimately why God allowed evil, suffering, and death. But here's my first point. If you're an atheist or if you're an agnostic, what is your solution to the problem of evil and death? My solution to the evil problem? The solution. What is your solution to the problem of evil and death? If you're an atheist, if you're an agnostic. I mean, the solution for everybody is just to be as good as possible. I mean, everybody should aim for being good. Um, True, according to their own definition of good, right? Becoming, yeah, own definition of good, whether it's objective good from God or objective good from another source. Well, remember, the atheist or agnostic says either there is no God or I don't know whether there's a God. Yeah. So good is not defined by God if you're an atheist. Yeah. If you're an atheist, good is defined by your culture or by the power elite or by yourself or by majority opinion. It could be just defined as good. It's just good just exists, whether God or not. How it, can good just exist? Good, good could possibly, because I, I don't know if there's a God or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, if there is such a thing as a, a god that is out of time, like, that is eternal, why right. can't other concepts like good just right. be out of time and eternal, just a thing that exists like God? Okay. 
<laughs> Sir, good is an intangible value. You cannot see good. You can't you cannot, see God either. You can, exactly. <laughs> you cannot measure good, right? You can't measure God. <laughs> it good, could exist exactly. eternally, just like, it could just be God, it could just be God, it could not be just God, it could just be the existence of good and evil that just exists in the world. But okay, given yeah. a try on the God who's all powerful and all caring, why evil and suffering exists right. doesn't make sense to me. Okay, good. I, and we're, we're, you hang with me and we'll go. Jesus is powerful Sir, and caring as he in says. In order to understand stop. goodness, there has to be a mind. This tree has no understanding of good. This cement has no understanding of good. See, good, good can't just exist. Because goodness requires definition. And it's an intangible value that you can't measure. You can't grab goodness. Which means you got to have a mind involved in defining what is good. If we're going by that definition, then what, what is defining God? Okay, what we'll created get to that. God? We'll get to that. All the arguments you could give for God could also go for good, just in a, as no. a general concept. Uh -uh. It could because just exist I'm... eternally out of time, unmeasurable. Um... No, sir. That's not fair. <laughs> Goodness requires a mind to define and understand it. Without a mind, the concept of good cannot exist. The notion of good as an intangible value suggests it requires a rational being to interpret and apply it. The idea of good existing independently of a deity is debated, with the conclusion that good necessitates a defining mind, which is God. Thanks for raising those issues. Yes, ma'am. They're also born with original sin, though. Which okay, what does that mean? Which, My good Catholic friend. What does that mean? Um, it means that as a consequence of, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a consequence of Adam and Eve eating the apple, all the following children would be born with this original sin that would have been an effect of mankind previously. Correct? Okay. Maybe. And um, at least also the way I was brought up was yes. that um, if you were not baptized or had your original sin reversed, you yep. would not be able to make it to heaven. Yeah, I so totally disagree that... with that. I don't think there's any biblical basis for that. But wouldn't, like, original sin be a spiritual birth defect? Good. Ooh, now I think we're on to something here. <laughs> okay, so what on earth is original sin? Original sin is simply this. I am born with a readiness to sin factor. Doesn't mean that everything I do is evil. My atheist friends do a lot of good, they've got a conscience, but all of us have sinned. Every atheist, every agnostic, every Christian, Jew, Buddhist, Hindu, we all have sinned. Part of the reason we have sinned is because we're born with a readiness to sin factor. Original sin refers to the inherent readiness to sin that humans are born with, not that they are punished for Adam and Eve's actions. Humans have a free will to choose good or evil, and while original sin affects all, personal responsibility remains. The sinlessness of Jesus is supported by the testimonies of those who lived closely with him. Historical and scriptural evidence from the Gospels and other sources affirm Jesus' claims and his resurrection. Faith in God and Jesus should be based on evidence and reason, not merely cultural or personal upbringing. Investigating the historical evidence for Jesus' life and resurrection is crucial for making an informed belief. The conversation stresses the importance of evidence-based belief, rational examination of religious claims, and the personal responsibility to investigate the teachings of Jesus and other religious figures. It encourages an honest and open-minded approach to understanding faith, morality, and the nature of good and evil.